Hello everyone. This is K Kumudaveni, Assistant Professor of IT from Eero Chinnada Engineering College. Today we are going to see about Introduction to SQL. So, what is SQL? SQL means a Standard Query Language. It is a standard language for accessing and manipulating a database. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. SQL lets you access and manipulate the databases. It access you and manipulate the databases. SQL is a standard called American National Standards Institute. So, what can SQL do? SQL can execute a queries against a database. SQL can retrieve a data from a database. It can also insert a records in a database and can update a records in a database. SQL can delete a records from a database and can create a new database. It can create a new tables in a database and can create a stored procedures in a database. So, what else can SQL do? It can execute a queries against a database and it can retrieve a database. SQL can insert records in a database and can update a records in a database. A SQL can delete a records from a database and create a new database. So, a SQL means a structured query language. So, a SQL is a standard, but although a SQL is an ANSR, means American National Standard Institute, and there are different versions of SQL languages. It is to be compliant with ANSI standard. They all support at least the major commands such as collect, update, delete, in such a similar manner. Using SQL in your website, to build a website that shows data from a database, you will need an RDBMS database program like MS Access, SQL Server and MySQL. So to build, to build a website that shows a data from a RDBMS database. So what is RD, RDBMS? So RDBMS. RDBMS stands for a Relational Database Management System. RDBMS is a basic of SQL and for all modern databases such as MS SQL Server, IBM, DB2, Oracle, MySQL and Microsoft Access. The data in RDBMS is stored in a database objects called tables. A table is a collection of related data entities and it consists of columns and rows. So what is RDBMS? RDBMS stands for a Relational Database Management System. It is a basis of SQL. There are several SQL commands like DDL, DML, TCL, DCL, and DQL. So DDL stands for a data definition language, and DML is for a data manipulation language, TCL for a transaction control language, and DCL for a data control language. DQL stands for a data query language. So these are the SQL commands. So DDL commands. DDL means a data definition language. DDL is a auto committed that means it saves all the changes permanently in the database. What are the commands of DDL? It's all create, alter, truncate, drop and its name. DDL is a actually consists of SQL commands that can be used to define a database schema. DDL consists of commands to commands like create, alter, truncate, drop rename these are the commands are used to create or modify the table in sql so create command is used to create a new table and alter command is used for an alteration truncate command is used for delete a data from a table and drop command is used to drop a table and rename is to rename a table so these are the command for database data definition language so create command Create is a DTL command used to create a table or database. How to create a database? Here's the syntax like create database database name. For example, for creating a database is this. And how to create a table by using a create command. This is the syntax known as create table table name. So create table table name is the syntax for creating a table. And there is another example for a creating a table. So this is the create command. And let's move to the alter command. Alter command is used for the alteration of table structures. There are various uses of alter commands such as to add a column, 
to existing a table, to rename any existing column, to change data type of an any column or to modify its size. Alter is used to drop a column. So the alter command is a detail command to modify the structure of existing table in a database by adding, modifying, renaming or dropping a columns and constraints. You can, add, you can add columns, rename, column, delete columns or change the data types of columns using the alter command. To add a column in a table, you need this syntax like alter table, table name, add column name, data type. Here is an example for add column to existing table. But to add a multiple column to a table, you need to add a syntax like alter table, table name, add column name 1, data type 1, column name 2, data type 2, column name 3, data type 3. Here is an example for to add a multiple column to existing table. To add a column with default 1, the syntax is like add the table table name, add column name 1, data type 1, default data. Here is an example for to add a column with default value. And to modify an existing column, we need a syntax like add a table, table name, modify, column name, data type. So there are also an other example like add a table to modify any column. We can use an alter command by this way also. To rename a column, you need to add a syntax like alter table table name or rename old column name to column name. This is a syntax for rename a column. Here is an example for a rename a column. And to drop a column, you need a syntax like alter table table name drop column name. Here is an example for this drop a column. And it can use you to drop a column and remove a column in a table. These are also part of an alter command. So let's move to a truncate command. Truncate command removes all the records from a table. But this command will now destroy the table structures. When we'll apply a truncate command on table, its primary key is initialized following the syntax is known as truncate table table name. The syntax of truncate command is truncate table truncate trun table name. Here is an example for truncate command like truncate table student and it will remove all all data from a table truncate command deletes all the all the tables or rows here you can use a where class a ddl order is what is it to delete all the data the sql truncate command locks the table and page this sql truncate is a data definition language command it removes all the rows in a table. SQL Server stores the data of the table in the pages. The truncate command deletes the rows by delocating the pages. So next command, drop command. Drop query completely removes the table from a database. This command will also destroy the table structure. The syntax for drop command is drop table table name. Drop command in SQL is a data definition language command that permanently removes the data from the database and free space from the memory. This is the data com drop command. So to rename a query, rename command is used to rename a table. For that syntax, rename a table, old table to new table name. Here is an example for rename query. From the view menu, choose solution and explorer right click the query you want to rename and click the rename the shortcut menu it appears. Type a new name for a query and then press enter. So rename command is used to rename a table. Its syntax is rename table, old table name to new table name. So next we move to the DML language. What is in by DML? A data manipulation language. Statements are used for managing a data in a database. DML commands are not auto committed. It means Changes made by a DML command are not permanent to database. It can be rolled back. It is a not auto committed. It change, changes made by a DML command are not permanent to a database. It can be rolled back. The data manipulation languages manage data records stored within a database table. 
So DML language in SQL manage a data record stored within a database tables. It does not deal with the changes to database objects and their structures. The commonly known DML commands are insert, update and delete. Here the commands are insert, update, delete and merge. Insert command will do the insert a new row. Update command will do a update existing row and delete command will do a deleting a row and merge will do a two rows to two tables with merging. So these are the DML languages commands like insert, update, delete and merge. To insert a command, insert command is used to insert a data into a table. Following its general syntax is insert into a table name values data1, data2. Let's see an example like SID as name age. We will be insert into an insert into a student values and it will be result like these. So for insert command, the syntax is insert to table name values data1, data2. It is used to insert the data into a table. For example, to insert a null value to a column. Both the statements below will insert a null value into a age column of student table. Insert into a student's ID name values 1 or 2 and legs. This is an example for an insert null value to a column. See, here is a null value. Here is an example for insert default value to a column. Suppose the age column of a student table has a default value of 14. Also, if you run the below query, it will insert the default value into an age column. Whatever the default value may be, insert into student's value, one or three queries will be a default value. So now, update command. Update command is used to update a row of table. Its syntax is update table name set column name equal to value where conditions. Let's see an example like this. This is an example for an update command. Example to the update multiple columns. Update student set name is equal to update age. This is an example of update multiple columns. See. There are multiple columns for an update. So let's move to a delete command. Delete command is used to delete the data from a table. Delete command can also be used with condition to delete a particular row. Following is its general syntax. Delete from a table name. So delete command syntax is delete from table name. So there is an example for a delete command like this. So now we move to the TCL. TCL means a transaction control language. A transaction control language TCL commands are used to manage a transaction in a database. These are used to manage the changes made by DML statements. It is also statements to be grouped together into a logical transactions. These commands are key to keep a check on other commands and their effect on the database. These commands can handle changes made by other commands by rolling back to original seed. It can also make changes permanent. There are basically three TCL commands, commit, rollback and save point. Commit command is used to permanently save any transaction into a database. The rollback command basically restores the database to lost committed statement. So, TCL. These commands are used for maintaining consistency of the database and for the management of transactions made by the DML commands. So, commit command. It is used to, to permanently save the table. And rollback is to undo the change and save font is to save it temporarily. Commit command. It is an SQL command used in a transaction table or database to make the current transaction or database statement permanent. Rollback. Rollback command is used for undoes any changes made to the database. Save, back, save point command. This command creates a point in a 
in your transaction to which can you roll back so commit is used to a permanently save and roll back is to do undo undo changes and save point is to save temporarily commit commands commit command is used to permanently save any transactions into a database this syntax is commit and roll back commit this command restores the data restores the database to lost committed state it also used with the save point command to jump to a save point into a transactions its syntax is roll back to save point uh, name a save point command this command is used to temporarily save transaction so that you can roll back to the point whenever necessary the other is tcl data control language it is used to control a privilege in database to perform any operation in a database such as for creating a tables sequences or views we need privileges privileges of two types is systems and object system will be creating a session table etc or all the types of system privileges object will do a any object of query to work on a tables comes under the object privilege the, these dcl commands are grant and revoke this grant will grant a permission for of right and revoke will be take back permission here we see the syntax for these all grant and revoke to allow a user to create a session we knew we need a syntax like grant create a section to user name to allow a user to create a table we need a syntax like grant create table to user name to provide user with a some space of table space to store table we need a syntax like add a user name quota limit on system to grant all privileges to a user grants system database to user grant to grant permission to create any table grant create any table to user name to grant permission to drop in any table grant drop any table to user name to take back permissions revoke create a table from user name so these are some grant and revoke commands in dcl so here see these are the syntax for grant this all and for revoke we need to take a back permission to create or to create a uh, to give a permission we need a grant to take back a permission we need a revoke now let's move to a back class what is meant by back class back class is used to specify a condition while retrieving a data from a table back class is used mostly with select update and delete query if condition specified by back class is true then only the result from a table is returned syntax for back classes is select com column name 1 column name 2 like that column name yan from table name var condition so what is var class the var class is used to filter the records it is used to extract to only those records which is fulfilled under specify the conditions for example if you want to update the cost for a specific product you can specify the product id in the var class and update the records this is an example for var class <coughs> if you want to update the cost for a specific product you can specify the product id in the var class and update the records so select query select query is used to retrieve a data from a tables it is mostly used as sql query we can retrieve a complete tables or partial by mentioning conditions using var class here is the syntax for select query select comma, column name column name 2 column name 3 to column name n from table name we need to use a select command for a query to select the data that you want to use you use a select query a select query is a database object that shows the information in data sheet view a query does not store data it displays the data that is stored in a tables a query can show data from one more tables from other queries or from a combinations of two here is an example for select query so it is used to select a data 
from a database. So, next order by class. Order by class is used with a select statement for arranging a retrieved data and store sorted order. They are ordered because by default stored data in ascending order. To sort data in descending order, DESA keyword is used with ordered by class. Here is a syntax for order by select common list from a table name ordered by ASDEC. This is a syntax for an order by and this is an example for an order by class. So what will be the order by class do? It is used to sort the data in either ascending or descending order based on one or more columns. This class can sort data by single column or by multiple columns. This is an example for order by DESP. You can consider an employee table described above. You see, this is an example for order by DESC. So, group by class. Group by class is used to create a group that results a select query based on one or more columns. It is also used with SQL functions to group the result from one more tables. Here is a syntax for group by statements. And also example for a group by in a statement. So, what is group by class? It causes the row of items tables to be collected into group. Each group composed of rows that have identical order number values. After the database server from the groups, the aggregate functions count and sum are applied within a each group. Here, we want to find the name and age of employees grouped by their salaries. A skill query for above requirements will be select name age from employee group by salary result will be like this so this is in having class having class is used with sql queries to give more precise conditions for a statement it is used to mention conditions in a group based sql function just like that class this syntax for a having class is select column name function column name from a table name where column name conditions and having this is an having clause syntax. Having function, column name, condition. So here is an example for having statement. Consider the following sale table. So what is meant by having class? It is used to used in a database system to fetch the data or values from the group according to the given conditions. The where class is used to database system to fetch the data or values from the table according to the given condition. But having class is used to database system to fetch the data or values from the group according to the given condition. This is the continuation of the example. Suppose we want to find the customer whose previous balance sum is more than 3000. We will use the below SQL query as select. The result will be like this. So, distinct keyword. The distinct keyword is used with select statement to retrieve the unique values from the table. Distinct removes all the duplicate records while retrieving from a database. The syntax for distinct keyword is select distinct column name from table name. For example, this is the distinct keyword example. Consider the following employee table. For example, The distinct keyword in the select clause is used to eliminate the duplicate rows and display a unique list of values. In other words, the distinct keyword retrieves unique values from a table. So, it is used to eliminate duplicate rows and display a unique list of values. This is the continuation of example for distinct keyword. So the above query will return only the one unique salary from the employee ta table. AND AND OR operator. What is meant by AND AND OR operator? AND AND OR operators are used with WHERE class to make more precise uh, conditions for fetching data from database by combining more than one conditions together. AND operator. AND operator is used to set multiple conditions with WHERE class. 
This is an example for AND operator. And for OR operator. OR operator is also used to combine a multiple conditions with WELL class. The only difference between AND and OR is their behavior. When we use AND to combine two or more than two conditions, Record satisfying all the conditions will be the result. But in case of or at least one conditions from the conditions specified must be satisfied by any record to be in the result. This is an example for an or. The above query will return records where either salary is greater than uh, age greater than 25. Let's move to the advanced SQL. SQL constraints are a rules used to really limit the type of data that can go into a table to maintain the accuracy and integrity of the data inside a table. SQL constraints are the rules used to limit the type of data that can go into a table to maintain the accuracy and integrity of the data inside table. Constraints can be divided into the following two types. One is the column level constraints and other is a table level constraints. Column level constraints limits only column data. Table level constraints limits the whole table data. Constraints are used to make sure that the integrity of data is maintained in the database. Following are the most used constraints that can be applied to a table. So like not null unique, primary key, foreign key, check and default. Not null constraint will be a restrict a column from having a null value. Once not null constraint is applied to a column, you cannot force a null value to the column. It enforces a column to constrain the proper value. One important point to note about a null, not null constraint is that it can be defined at a table level. The example of using not null constraint is here. So let's move to a unique constraint. Unique constraints ensures that a field of column will only have unique values. A unique constraints field will not have duplicate data. Unique constraints can be applied at a common level or a table level. That ensures the field or column will not have unique values and its constraints will not have a duplicate data. It can be applied at a col column level or a table level. Here is an example for unique constraints. For unique constraint, after a table is created, also an example. There are two examples for unique constraints. Now, let's move to a primary key constraint. What is mean by primary key constraint? Primary key constraints uniquely to identify each record in a database. It uniquely identifies each record in a database. A primary key must contain a unique value and it must not contain null value. Usually, primary key is used to index the data inside the table. Example of primary key is below. There are other examples for primary key constraint at a common column level is also below. So what is primary key constraint? It uniquely identifies the each record in a database and it must contain a unique value and it must not contain a null value. It's usually primary key is used to index the data inside the table. So let's move to the foreign key constraints. What is mean by foreign key? Foreign key is used to relate the two tables. Foreign key constraint is also used to restrict the actions that would destroy the link between tables. To understand the foreign key, let's see using two tables. This is the for customer detail table and this is the order detail table. These two tables are related to the foreign key constraints. So, a foreign key, FK, is a column or combination of column that is used to establish and enforce a link between the data in two tables to control the data that can be stored in a foreign key table. So what is mean by foreign key? It is a column of combinations of column 
that is used to establish and enforce a link between the data in two tables to control the data that can be stored in a foreign key table. There is an example for a foreign key constraint at a table level. They are creating a table and they are inserting a foreign key reference for a table name. So what do you mean by chip constraints? Chip constraints is used to restrict the value of column between a range. It performs a check on the values before storing this them into a database. It's like a condition checking before saving a data into a column. It is used to restrict the value of common column between a range. It performs a check on a value before storing them into a database. It's like a condition checking before the saving data into a column. There is a two example for a check constraint at a table level and the column column level. They are creating a table and inserting a check constraint at a table level and also in a column level. So a check constraint is a rule that specifies the value that are allowed in one or more columns of every row of a base table. For example, you can define a check constraint to ensure that all values in a column that can age as or positive a number. You can define a check constraint to ensure that all values in a column that contains the ages are positive numbers. So let's move to the SQL function. SQL provides many built-in functions to perform an operations on data. These functions are useful for performing a mathematical calculations, string concentrations, substrings, etc. SQL functions are divided into two categories aggregate functions and scalar functions. In aggregate functions, there are seven types like average zero and count zero and etc. So aggregate function means what? The aggregate function means these aggregation return a single value after calculating from a group of values. Following are some frequently used aggregate functions. So SQL functions are two categories like aggregate functions and scalar functions. So, aggregate function. These functions retain a single value calculating from a group of values. Following are some frequently used aggregate functions. First is average 0. Average returns average values after calculating from values in a numeric column. It is general syntax of select average column name from a table name. So, these are the functions return in a single value after calculating from a group of values. Following are some frequently used aggregate functions. What is meant by average zero? Average returns average value after calculating from a values in a numeric columns. Okay. Now let's move to the count zero. What is meant by count zero? Count returns the number of rows present in a table either based on some conditions or without conditions. Here is an example for using count zero. And there is a syntax called select count column name from a table name. So what is meant by count zero? Count returns the number of row present in a table either based on same conditions or without a condition. So next, what is meant by first zero? First function returns first value of a selected column. Syntax for the first function is select first column name from a table name. So first zero means a first function returns from the first value of selected column. Here is an example for first zero. So, there is an example for a first zero called a four column. Then, let's move to the last zero. The last return the written va last value from selected column. The syntax for last function is select last column name from a table name. There is an example for last zero. So, what is meant by last zero? Lost return the return lost value from a selected column. So now let's move to the maximum zero. What is meant by max zero? The max functions returns the maximum value from the selected column of the table. The syntax of max function is the select max column name from a table name. Example of max zero is the below table. A SQL query to find the maximum salary is Select max salary from employee 
Result of the above query will be max salary 10,000. Here is an example max 0. So what is max 0? The max functions return maximum value from selected column of the table. So we have seen a maximum 0. Now we have going to see minimum 0. Min 0. So min function returns the minimum value from a selected column of the table. The syntax of minimum functions is select min column name from table name. Example of min 0 is here below. So what is min 0? Min functions returns a minimum value from a selected column of the table. There is an example for min 0 is this tabular column. A scale query to find a minimum salary is select min salary from and here. So let's move to the last one sum 0. So sum function returns the total sum of selected columns numeric values. The syntax of sum is select sum column name from a table name. So example of sum 0 is below given table. Okay. So sum function returns the total sum of selected columns and numerical values. What is meant by sum? Sum functions returns total sum of the selected columns and numerical values. This is the syntax for sum. Select sum column name from a table name. And this is the example for sum 0. Now we are going to the scalar functions. What is meant by scalar functions? A scalar function returns a single value from an input value. Following a sum sequence frequently used are scalar functions. Scalar functions return a single value from an input value. So first is use case function. What is meant by use case function? Use case function is used to convert the values of string column to upper characters. Syntax of use case function is select use case column name from a table name. So here is an example for use case. So what is use case? A use case function is used to convert the value of string column to an upper characters, upper case characters. So here comes a lower case. L case means a lower case form function. L case function is used to convert the value of string column to a lower ca case characters. The syntax of lower case is select lower case column name from a table name. Here is an example for lower case. This is the table column of lower case for an example. So Lower case function is used to convert the value of string column to a lower case characters. So here comes a mid function. Mid function is used to extract the substrings from a column value of string types in a table. Syntax of mid functions is select mid value and column name start and length from a table name. Example mid functions examples are given below. So what is mid functions? Mid function is used to extract the substrings from a column values of string types in a table. So round function. What is meant by round function? It is used to round a numeric field to number of nearest integer. It is used in a decimal point values. There is a syntax of round function is select round column name decimals from a table name. So what is round function? Round function is used to a round numeric field to number of nearest integer. It is used to round the numeric field to number of nearest integer. It is used to it is used on decimal point values. It is a continuation of an example for round function. So that's all about this session. So, if you have any doubt, you can ask me. So, now I'll give an overview of this session. So, what is SQL? 
SQL is stands for Structured Query Language. SQL is a standard language for accessing and manipulating a databases. SQL lets you access and manipulate the databases. It is an American National Standard Institute. And what can SQL do? An SQL can execute a queries against a database. And SQL can retrieve a data from a database and it can insert a records in a database. SQL can update the records in a database and SQL can delete a record from a database. It can create a new tables and can create a new tables in a database. It can create a stored procedures in a database. So, what is RDBMS? RDBMS stands for a Relational Database Management System. RDBMS is a basis of SQL and for all modern database systems such as MS SQL, Server, IBM, DB2, Oracle, MySQL and Microsoft Access. The data in RDBMS is stored in a database objects called tables. A table is a collection of related data entities and it consists of columns and rows. So RDBMS is stands for a relational database management system and it is stored in a database objects called tables. So what are the SQL commands that are known as a DDL, DML, TCL, TCL, DQL. DDL is for a data definition language and DML for a data manipulation language and TCL for a transaction control language and DCL for a data control language and DQL for a data query language. So a data definition language consists of commands like create, alter, truncate, drop and rename. It is an auto committed and that it means saves all the changes permanently in the database. This is the DDL commands. <coughs> so create command used for creating a table or a database and an alter command is used for an alteration of a table structures and it has a various adding columns, multiple columns to add a default value or existing columns or rename a column or drop a column like this and all. Now let's move to a truncate command. A truncate command is nothing but it all removes the records from a table. And a drop command and rename query will drop a table from a database and rename will be used to rename a table. So what is DML? Data manipulation language, which is used to managing a data in a database. DML commands are not auto committed and its main changes are made by DML commands are not permanent to a database. The commands of DML are insert, update, and delete and merge. What is insert? Insert is to insert a new row. Insert command is used for an insert a data into a table. And it has a more like null value and default value. What is update command? Update command is used to update a row of table. And it has a multiple column update command. In delete command, they can use it to delete a data from a table. And these also having a table and a particular record from a table. So, TCL. What is meant by TCL? A transaction control language commands are used to manage a transaction in a database. These are used to manage the changes made by DML statement. These are used to manage a transaction in a database and these are used to manage the changes made by DML statements. It also allows the statements to be grouped together into a logical transactions. These commands are used to keep a chain on other commands and their offer the database. The commands and details are commit, rollback and save point. So commit command is used to permanently save any transaction into a database and rollback command this command restores the database to lost commit state it, and it also used with the save point command to jump to a save point in a transaction.
So save point command is used to temporarily save a transaction so that you can roll back to the point whenever necessary. So this here, data control language. Data control language is used to control privilege in database to perform any operations in a database such as for creating a tables, sequences or view we need a privileges, privileges or two types. And there are two commands in DCL for data control languages like grant and revoke. Grant is for a grant permission of right and revoke is to take back permission. Here are several uh, syntax for a grant and revoke commands. So this is in back class. Back class is used to specify the conditions while retrieving a data from table. Back class is used to mostly with the select, update and delete query. If condition specified by where class is truly then only the result from table is returned. And we, and we see it as select query and order by class and example of order by class and group by class having class and distinct keyword and and or operator what is and operator and operator is used to set multiple conditions with var class whereas or operator is also used to combine a multiple conditions with var class the only difference between and and or is their behavior when we use and to comply to combine two or more than two conditions, record satisfies all the conditions will be in the result. But in case or at least one condition from the conditions specified must be satisfied by any record to be in the result. So advanced SQL. SQL constraints are two categories like column level constraints and table level constraints. Column level constraints. What is mean by column level constraints? There are more constraints like constraints are used to make sure that the integrity of data is maintained in the database. The following are most used constraints that can be applied to a table. Normal constraints, unique constraints, primary constraints, foreign key constraints, check constraints and default constraints. So, normal constraints. Normal constraints for a strict set column from a having a null value once not null constraints is applied to a column, you cannot pass a full value to a column. It enforces a column to contain a proper value. One important point to note about a null not null constraint that it can't be defined at the table level. So unique key constraints. Unique key constraints ensures that a field or a column will only have a unique values. A unique constraints field will not have a duplicate data and unique constraints can be applied at column level or a table level. So primary key constraints. Primary key constraints uniquely identifies each record in a database. A primary key must contain a unique value and it must not contain a null value. Usually primary key is used to index the data inside the table. Foreign key constraint. Foreign key is used to relate the two table foreign key. Constraint is also used to restrict the actions that would destroy the link between a tables to understand a foreign key. Check constraints. A check constraint is used to restrict the value of column between a range. It performs a check on the values before storing them into a database. It's like a condition checking before saving a data into a column. So SQL functions. What are the SQL functions? They are aggregate functions and scalar functions. Aggregate functions having a functions like Average functions. Average functions return the average value after calculating from a values in a numeric column. A general a general syntax is a select average from a table name. Average function returns the average value after calculating from a value in a numerical column. So count function. Count returns the number of rows present in a table either based on some conditions without a conditions. The count returns the number of rows present in a table either based on some conditions or without conditions. First function. First function returns the first value of a selected column. Last function. Last return the return last value from a selected column. 
last return the return last value from the selected column and max function max function returns a maximum value from a selected column of the table minimum function minimum function returns a minimum value from a selected column of the table sum function sum function returns a total sum of selected columns and numerical values so next a scalar function scalar functions having a use case function and lower case functions and also a mid function mid function is used to extract a substrings from a column values of string types in a table and a round function is used to a round a numerical field to number of nearest integer it is used to decimal point values yeah that's all about a scalar so let's end the session by a scalar function thank you